One good way to understand slope is to look at a ski lift. You would see different lines here and all of them are tilted at various angles. Just look at the figure, don't think too much, simply look and guess which line has the greatest slope and which one has the smallest. Clearly, this slope is the greatest. That's because it's tilted the most. And this one is the smallest as it has a very tiny tilt. A line like this will have a greater slope if it has a steep inclination. And a line like this one, which has a gradual inclination, will have a smaller slope. Understanding slopes is easy and there is also a way in which a slope can be measured. The slope is simply a ratio. It is the ratio of rise over run. What does this ratio actually mean? To understand this, let's draw the coordinate plane. It has the y and the x axis. How do we find the slope of this line? To find the slope, we just have to pick any two points on the line. Any two. And from the bottom point, we need to reach the top one by rising and running. Yes, rise and run. Think of a little man doing it. To reach from the bottom point to the one on top, he rises and runs. Does the slope also have a sign? So before understanding how a slope can be measured, let's understand its sign. Yes, the sign of the slope depends on the sign of rise and run. A good way to understand that is by knowing that rising up is always positive and running to the right is also positive. Going down or running left will both be negative. Here, the rise as well as the run are positive. So the slope will be a ratio of two positive numbers. Positive over positive will give us a positive number. This line we can say has a positive slope. Now look at this line. We use the same procedure. We mark two random points on the line and to go from the bottom point to the top one, we rise and run. If we look at the little man, he rises up and runs to the left. Rising up is positive and running to the left is negative. So the slope of this line will be positive over negative and this ratio will be negative. This line has a negative slope. What about the slope of this line which is parallel to the x-axis? You don't really need to mark two points to find its slope. It has no tilt. It means the rise will be zero. So the slope will equal zero over run, which is zero. The slope of the x-axis is also zero. What will be the slope of this line which is parallel to the y-axis? It's simple. You cannot run left or right after marking two points. The run is zero. So the slope will be rise over zero and anything over zero is undefined. The slope of a line parallel to the y-axis is undefined or as some say is infinite. Now if you have understood the concept of signs, finding the slope is very easy. So let's move on to finding the slope of a line. How do we find the slope of this line? We have been given the coordinates of two points on the line. One is 2 comma 3 and the other is minus 2 comma minus 3. To find the slope, we just need to find the ratio of rise over run. Okay, let's shift the camera to the right. The slope is rise over run. How do we find the rise? Simple, we just find this length. To find this length, we need the coordinates of this point. As it meets the x-axis at minus 2 and the y-axis at 3, its coordinates will be minus 2 comma 3. The rise will be the difference in the y-coordinates. 3 minus minus 3. The run will be this length, which is the difference in the x-coordinates of these two points. 2 minus minus 2. The slope is 6 over 4, which is 3 over 2. The rise as well as the run are positive, up and right. If the two points are x, y and x1, y1, then the formula of the slope is y minus y1 
over x minus x1. 3 minus minus 3 is actually y minus y1. And 2 minus minus 2 is x minus x1. That's how we calculate the slope of a line. In the next few sessions, we will see how the slope and the equation of the line are related.